The listing of the richest people on earth keeps changing all the time. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty fluid thing to be on that list of world's richest people. I understand that Jeff Bezos has attained to that highest rank again. He lost that status for a while, but I think according to the latest statistics that I read, he's back on top worth about $190 billion. That's pretty amazing. You know, Bezos started the online retail service that we all know as Amazon. He started that in his garage in Seattle back in 1994, and now he's worth $190 billion. Actually, the pandemic hit, and he prospered greatly. You know, a lot of people lost during the times of the pandemic, but his business prospered. And as I said, he's estimated to be worth $190 billion. His personal wealth grows by an estimated $320 million every day. He makes $150,000 per minute. Can you imagine that? Those numbers are just completely uh, uh, you know, inconceivable. Uh, they're just crazy. Uh, they're obviously not attainable by other people. We, nobody could ever probably get to that sort of status again. Are you, but I want to ask a question. Are you rich? Are you personally rich? Well, I think when we just talked about someone like Jeff Bezos, we say, absolutely not. No way. I'm not rich like Jeff Bezos uh, from what I was reading, the second richest man in the world is a guy I hadn't even heard of before, a guy named Bernard Arnault, who's a big fashion guy in France. He's second most wealthy currently. Third is the guy we hear quite a bit about with the Tesla electric cars and, uh, and the SpaceX uh, rockets and so forth. Uh, Elon Musk, I think, is third. We're never going to be rich like that, right? And so when you say, are you rich? And then you compare it to the world's richest people. You say, no, I'm definitely not rich. But actually, here's the point I want to make to you. Actually, in reality, you are richer than they are. That is, if you know and live by the truths that God has revealed in his word. You are richer than Jeff Bezos or Bernard Arnault or Elon Musk. You are richer. And today we want to talk about that. We're going to entitle our lesson, Rich Without Money. And it's possible to be rich without money. Many uh, can speak to that have, uh, and experience that indescribable wealth that comes from serving God. And to others who have not yet enjoyed that, we want to make sure you understand it's possible for you too. You can be rich without money. We stop here just briefly to thank everybody for being here on this Lord's Day. We are glad that you came. We are encouraged by you being here today. And we hope that everything we do will be acceptable and honoring and glorifying our Father who is in heaven. Thanks for being here. Thanks to our visitors today, especially. So how can you be rich without money? That almost seems to be a contradiction, doesn't it? But we believe that you can be rich. For instance, you're rich if you have a good name. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, it says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. I think it's impressive that this statement was made by Solomon, who by many estimates would have been the richest man or was, continues to this day to be the richest man who ever lived in all of history. That, that point can be debated back and forth and there's some quibbles about whether his riches would hold up in comparison to a, a Jeff Bezos or not. But he certainly was extremely wealthy. And so he knew from personal experience that having a good name was better than riches. We believe he was writing this observation by inspiration, of course, but it is a truth. If you've got a good reputation, you're richer than the richest men. You've been hearing all the news about Bill Gates. Bill Gates, of course, is the Microsoft guy. He used to be way up there on the rank of world's richest, maybe even for a time was the world's richest man. He's dropped down a man. 
He's all the way down to six or seven now, I think, in the latest listing. Still worth billions and billions of dollars, but now his reputation has been tarnished. You know, he's getting a divorce, and, and now some bad news has come out. Some, some of the misconduct that he's been guilty of is being exposed. His reputation has been tarnished. What about us? Are we rich in reputation? If you think about it, the truth is that you already have a, a bank account, as it were. You have a bank account concerning your reputation. And so people know you, and they know what your reputation is. What kind of a name do you have? Is your reputation good or bad? For all of us, I think we should be working at upping our net worth in regards to our reputation, a good name. Uh, is rather to be chosen than great riches. If you have a good reputation, you are a rich person for sure. We could add to that. If you have good health, you are rich, even if you don't have a lot of money. Anybody remember Steve Jobs? Does that name ring a bell with you? Steve Jobs. He's the guy who was the uh, principal founder of Apple Computers. Uh, uh, and even to this day, I believe Apple Computers is considered to be worth more than any other company in the world. And so Apple, Steve Jobs' creation, uh, extremely valuable in terms of dollars. But as you surely know, Steve Jobs died several years ago, back in 2011. Steve Jobs died at the age of 56. So I got a thought. Do you, do you think that he would be willing to trade places with you? Do you think that he'd be willing to trade places and you can have all his money if he can have your health? Uh, I suspect he would be willing to make that trade. And so good health is a blessing to be sure and not to be taken for granted. In Acts chapter three, there's kind of an interesting episode. Peter and John, this is just shortly after the church had begun on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem. And, and Peter and John were heading to the temple. And it says in Acts 3, beginning verse 2, A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. Peter said, silver and gold have I none. I don't have any money to give you. But such as I have, I give thee. Such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He, he, he healed him. This man had never walked before. Do you think he would have considered it to be better than some silver or gold coins? that Peter and John might have thrown into his basket? Do you think that the reception of good health and the ability to walk would have been considered more valuable to him? I'm sure he would consider that a far greater gift. Obviously, what Peter gave him was better than money. And so I would argue that for us, it is also true. If we have good health, we're rich, a lot better off than a a lot of other people are. We need to be grateful for that. And then beyond that, I think we want to be good stewards of the good health that God has blessed us with. If we have good health, it gives us the opportunity to do good things in His service, and we should. And so good health is a kind of wealth that even money can't buy, asked Steve Jobs. Do you have friends? If you have friends, you have an important kind of wealth. We hear all the time about famous people who were very rich, but they lived in almost complete isolation. I'm, I'm pretty sure that a, a lot of our young people never heard the name Howard Hughes. Some of us who are older remember Howard Hughes a generation ago. He was the richest man in the world. But Howard Hughes lived as a, a reclusive hermit. He had no friends. He was afraid to even be around people. He was rich, but he didn't have friends. You have friends. Look around. 
We're surrounded by friends and brethren. And since you have friends, you're rich in a very precious way if you have friends. And the, book, the short book, one chapter book of 3 John, in 3 John verse 2, John says to Gaius, John was writing to the Christian man named Gaius, he said, Beloved, I, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. There's an implication in that statement that some sort of pick up on that maybe Gaius's physical health wasn't as good as he would have liked. And that may be, I think that's certainly a way that you could interpret that statement. But notice what John says to him in verse 14. He says, peace be to thee, our friends salute thee, greet the friends by name. He had friends, our friends, greet the friends. Gaius had friends. And so although his physical health might not have been excellent, we don't know for sure, but he had friends for sure, and, and he could count the apostle John as one of his friends. He was blessed in that regard. We are blessed. And again, we need to understand that that is so and not take for granted the great blessing that we have in the friends who surround us. It's a great thing. Do you have a happy home? If so, you're rich if you have a happy home. There are lots of stories told about rich people whose families were an absolute train wreck. And I know that you could probably call some of those kind of stories to mind. We mentioned several times already this morning the world's richest man, Jeff Bezos. You know, of course, that back in 2019, he divorced his wife uh, of, of many years. Actually, that cost him money, too. I think he had to give 25% of his net worth to his wife when he divorced. That's what knocked him off of being number one, world's richest man for a while. Uh, he, he's made his way back. But, but what about Bezos? Wonder if he would trade all or even some of his wealth if he could have a happy family life. I think it's possible, right? I don't know if he's smart enough to realize that, but it would be a good thing. It's worth lots to have a happy home. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 14. House and wealth are inherited from father, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. If you've got a happy marriage, then that's a blessing. You're rich. If you have a happy marriage, a prudent wife is a blessing from the Lord. Then in Proverbs 23, verse 24, the father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who fathers a wise son will be glad in him. Do you have good children? Do you have, do you have children who are doing the right thing in their lives? Uh, that's a blessing too. That's a blessing too. A happy home, a good marriage. Good children, children who are doing well in this world, and especially who are doing well in service to God. That's a blessing. I want to tell you something about those blessings. Those are not accidental. Those things don't just happen by chance. Oh, you're lucky. You've got a happy marriage. Oh, you're lucky because your children are doing well. That's not luck. That's not just pure random chance. You've got to put forth effort to have a good marriage and to raise faithful children. You gotta work at that. It's not just luck or random chance, but if you have that, you know the blessings that come associated with that. You're rich without money if you have a happy home. Do you have a good conscience? Can you pillow your head at night free from a guilty conscience? Uh, that's, a rich, that's a rich blessing too. Now, whenever we talk about conscience, we have to, of course, explain the caveat that sadly a lot of people in the world don't realize, and that is that a, a, a clear conscience is not the, the final acid test of all things. Because we know it's possible to have a clear conscience and be absolutely wrong with God. And, and the classic example of that that we so often cite is the, is the Apostle Paul, who spoke of having a clear conscience while he was engaged in persecuting the church before his conversion. Acts 23, verse 1, Paul earnestly beholding the council said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. I believe and most believe that he was including that time wherein he was persecuting the church, but his conscience was clear. 
In chapter 26, verse 9, Paul said, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And so he, he thought he was doing the right thing and his conscience was clear in that regard. But he didn't have a good conscience. And so be careful. Not, when we say that a clear conscience is, is a, a form of wealth, it's a good blessing to have a clear conscience. Understand that the conscience is not the final test of all things. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4 verse 2 that there would be some speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You can so abuse your conscience that you could maybe go to sleep at night without a feeling guilty. But the fact of the matter is you should feel guilty because you're not living right. So conscience, again, you've got to be careful about uh, conscience. But having said all of that, it is truly a great blessing from God to have a clear conscience. The Hebrew writer says in chapter 13, verse 18, we have a good conscience desiring to conduct ourselves honorably in all things. It's, it's such a great blessing that the God of heaven has made it possible for us to have a good conscience uh, by virtue of the blessings that he has extended to us, especially uh, through His Son, Jesus Christ, we can have a clear conscience. So, are you rich in that way? I tell you, there are a lot of people in the world who can't say that. If you have a clear conscience, you've got some great wealth there. Are you a member of the Lord's Church? If you're a member of the Lord's Church, you are a rich individual. There are a lot of people who take the church for granted. And I've even had people say to me, I don't have to be a member of any church to be right with God. And so in saying those kind of things, they diminish or disrespect the precious body of Christ that he purchased with his own blood. In 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20, For you were bought with a price. Glorify your God. Acts 20 verse 28, The church of God which he obtained with his own blood. If you've been added to the Lord's church by obeying the gospel, then you have a valuable heritage. I hope that none of us would ever take that for granted in the, in the broad general sense of being a member of the universal body of Christ. We talk about the church universal. We talk about all saved people worldwide. And if you're a saved person, you're a part of that one true church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so if you're a member of that body of Christ, a member of the Lord's church, you have something very precious that you ought to respect. I think we could talk about the Lord's church on the local level right here at College View. And I really believe that we should understand that we are blessed to be members of a local body such as this. There are people in other places who don't have what we have. Uh, there are some places where there's no local church and you might have to drive an hour or two even to assemble with just a handful of other people who believe the truth of the gospel. Uh, the, the church in lots of places struggles even to maintain uh, you know, you know, their regular meetings. They have so few in attendance. The fact that we have a good number of faithful brethren that we can draw strength and encouragement from, that's a blessing. And that's a form of wealth that we need to appreciate. If you're a member of the Lord's church, you have great wealth. And finally, let me suggest to you, if you're a faithful Christian with the hope of heaven, you have wealth without money, rich without money. Several people have mentioned this morning already, uh, Dale mentioned in his prayer, the passing of Jeff Fox. I, we were all just shocked and devastated this week to learn of his passing. Just one week ago, in, in, in when we assembled on Sunday morning, I remember Jeff sitting over there. We were talking in our uh, Bible class here in the auditorium. Uh, and Jeff made the observation, you know, we've got to just be ready because we don't know when death might come. It could come at any time for any of us. It was so ironic that he made that observation in Bible class because by all indication, he simply returned home from services here last Sunday morning he had taken his church clothes off and laid them on the bed and fell over dead. Completely, utterly unexpected. But you know, he died with hope. He was a Christian and he had hope of heaven. I tell you, Jeff was not a rich person, not by the standards of the world. 
He was like the rest of us. He, he, he certainly was blessed, but he wasn't a rich man. And yet, in reality, he really was rich because he was able to die in hope. He died with hope for eternity. And if you have that hope, you have something extremely precious that you need to appreciate. In Revelation 2, beginning verse 8, the text that was read for us earlier by Tyler, the Lord says to the church in Smyrna, right, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Apparently these folks in Smyrna were poor folks, materialistically, with this world's goods, money and the things that money might buy. He says, I know your poverty. The Lord was aware they were physically poor, but notice, but thou art rich. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So some really poor people. Jesus said, I know your poverty, but in, in, in the most important things, you are rich. Be faithful to death. I give thee a crown of life. And so if you are a faithful Christian, and if you have that real hope of heaven in eternity, then you are tremendously blessed. Let me ask you a question, and as we draw this to a close, with special emphasis on this last point, are you rich because you are a faithful Christian and you have this hope of heaven? If so, as we're saying, be grateful, be thankful. But if not, here's the thing. If this last description doesn't fit you, or really any of the descriptions that we've made in our lessons, if that doesn't fit you, that can be changed. You know? I can't get rich. I'm never going to be rich like Jeff Bezos, and neither are you. We can't do that. That's an impossibility, right? That, that, that suggests something that's often never, never land. We're never going to have that. But what we've been describing this morning is completely within our grasp. God has made it so that we can be rich without money especially we can have that hope of heaven in eternity. What's your situation this morning? Have you obeyed the gospel, making you a child of God with that hope? If not, we would encourage you to know and obey the gospel plan of salvation. Hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized for the remission of sins. If we can help you in that, we'd be anxious to do so. If you need to study more, we'll gladly do so. Let us know. If you're a Christian, but you're not a faithful Christian, and maybe you have surrendered that hope by virtue of the fact that you've not been faithfully serving your God, we beg you to come back to Him in repentance, confession, and prayer. If we can help, let us know while we stand and sing.